I have been up reading in bed for about an hour. I have been reading this book for my thesis. It's The Shell and the Kernel by Abraham and Torok. It's already 1.37 in the morning. The roommates are still awake studying, and that's why the lights beyond my bed are still on. But I have my blackout curtains here and my own little reading lamp so that anytime they want to turn off the lights, they can. I have a video in my channel about my curtains, which I will link down below. That orange colored thing is my stand for my Apple Watch. I also have a review of it in my channel, which I will also link down below. I have actually had heart palpitations for an hour before getting into bed, but they stopped right after I went to bed. So I decided to see my cardiologist today. And by 9.32, I was already in a grab car, which is an alternative to Uber, and I don't use Uber anymore. We are currently stuck in heavy traffic, as you can see. This area is already Makati, the central business district of Metro Manila, and traffic is worst on weekday mornings. Right after I got to the Makati Medical Center, I dropped by the office of my HMO to get letters of authorization before I could see my doctors. I will be seeing two doctors today. The first doctor is my doctor for my reactive lymphadenopathy, specifically adenitis. I've had that appointment set beforehand and the second doctor I'll be seeing is my cardiologist but the first doctor will be in at one o'clock and the cardiologist will be in at 3 30 and all of these things I knew beforehand but I decided to come in early so I could read and also so that traffic won't make me late and stress me out so I am going down the escalator from the first floor to the ground floor because my favorite restaurant, Pancake House, is still being renovated. It's at the third floor. I decided to get brunch at this restaurant. This one here, right inside the Makati Medical Center. It's called the Floating Island and there is a Krispy Kreme right outside and another dessert place right outside. And I don't really like Floating Island very much because service is very bad but today they don't seem to be very busy so I decided to take my chances. I found a nice spot in the corner and ordered a pork with some kind of sauce over rice and a glass of juice and it was okay nothing special it wasn't too expensive but I realized I could not stay there to read because it was extremely cold and I wasn't wearing my flannel jacket for the day so I decided to go out and read at the Starbucks across the street but pedestrians are actually not allowed to cross the street here and we are required to use a bridgeway that's accessed through the third floor of the hospital. You can see here that there are barriers along the street downstairs on this side and also on this side. There is a screen covering the street here and I don't know why, but it's a pretty safe bridgeway and there are security guards all over and at night this is well lit. And from where we are now standing downstairs, we can see the underneath of the bridgeway that we just walked through. And these windows right here are the windows to the individual doctor's clinics inside the hospital. The actual area where patients are confined are in a different wing and closely guarded. No one can get in without permission. But from here on out, it's just a few steps to the Starbucks where we are going to get dessert and read for a little bit. I found a nice cozy and warm spot at the corner of the room and I ordered a waffle with caramel sauce and a hot chocolate and I'm still going to be reading that Abraham and Torok book for my thesis. It was only about 11 o'clock when I got here but after an hour and a half of reading, I was ready to go because the first doctor I will be seeing would be in at 1 o'clock. And the restaurant or the Starbucks has already started to fill up because it was already the lunch hour. And I have made pretty good headway with this book. And 
we are now back inside the hallways of the doctor's clinics of the Makati Medical Center. Now all hallways of the doctor's clinics look like this. They all look the same and those chairs are for the waiting patients and it's kind of confusing because everything looks the same but I have been going to this hospital since about 2009 so I pretty much know my way around. The chairs are not very comfortable to sit in but I think I know the purpose why so that people will not fall asleep and so that they will be awake when their names are called by the receptionists and I have been reading for about half an hour in my waiting seat and I expect to be called at any moment and then after about half an hour I was able to see my um doctor for my reactive lymphadenopathy or adenitis and I was already on my way to um, my cardiologist and I know that he wouldn't be in yet but I wanted to see his receptionist or secretary to let her know that I can wait outside with my book so that just in case the doctor comes in a little bit early um, he can see me if he wants to Again, all of these hallways look pretty much the same. The cardiologist is in another hall on the same floor, so the numbering is different. But I have been here quite a few times, so I know my way around. And the doctor wasn't in yet, so I just picked a seat and then went back to my book. But at some point during my waiting, the office called me because they needed me to email them something. These are the logos for a newly rebranded program that my office is working on. I did not design this logo. My office mate did. His name is Walter and he's a really good graphic artist and a really good strategist for online campaigns. He designed this logo and I was just the one who refined it and made these three different applications for it and the office wanted me to email these to them because they have to farm it out already. I was only too happy to oblige since I brought my my laptop with me and I had data service on my phone. After a bit of a wait, I finally got to see my cardiologist and he decided to have a 24-hour halter monitor installed on me and I already have my HMO's approval for it. Now I have to go to the heart station to arrange for that. Once again, we are going down the escalator through the lobby and up these stairs so that we can get to the scenic elevators at the ground floor mezzanine. It's already 4.23 in the afternoon and here you can see the view from the mezzanine to the third floor where the heart station is. I am so fascinated with these transparent elevators inside transparent elevator shafts. And I am typically afraid of heights, but today we are just going to the third floor, so it's okay. And Makati Medical Center is not a very tall building. This particular wing is only about eight floors high, so I don't get anxiety attacks here. And now here we are at third floor, and the heart station is right there at the corner. And inside they have this kiosk where I can get my queuing number, and I just have to sit and wait for this number to be called. But I saw in the queuing monitors that I don't really have to wait that long, although there were a bunch of people before me. Um, I just picked a seat and then waited a few minutes. When my number was called, I talked to the receptionist and she scheduled me for the installation of the 24-hour halter monitor next week because none were available at an earlier date. I guess I will just have to update you then in another vlog. I went back down the same way I came via the scenic elevators. I find them so fascinating. It is a little bit before 5 o'clock and the sun will start to set in a little while so the rays of the sun are at an angle and streaming through the glass of the elevator shaft. Across the hallway is the salad bar and there are a lot of food places inside Makati Medical Center and these few that I showed you in this video are just the ones that I came across today as I went through my appointments. I was a bit lucky to be able to capture two elevators in one frame with one elevator going up and another elevator going down and you can see the mechanism that allows them to run with all the wires and cables and weights and the other equipment hooked up to it. It's so fascinating. 
But before I left Makati Med, I wanted to show you this gift shop because I had to break a thousand peso bill anyway. So I decided to buy something from here. It is right in the ground floor and it has all sorts of things, pill boxes. And um, I have that one. And I am also using this one right here that I'm holding. I'm using mine right now. And then there are um, earbuds and earphones. And there are some toiletries right at the back of the cashier. And there are some magazines and snacks, cold drinks, and toys for children. And there is a candy bar. And there are um, items for infants and nursing mothers. And sandwich spreads and salad sauces and cookies and snacks in jars all sorts of things food and i saw this on the stand right by the door it's called a headwear loop scarf and you can you're supposed to be able to wear it a bunch of different ways and here is another one that is supposed to be a convertible um sarong or something very intriguing, but I didn't buy it. I didn't even ask for the price. And these are also just ordinary stretchable headbands. Here are the earbuds once again and some personal grooming items. And I decided to get this pill dispenser. I like pill dispensers and pill boxes. And I've already showed you um, one of them in one of my earlier videos, which I will link down below but I decided to get this pill box because it looks very 1950s to me with the color and the font and the general design and feel of it and it has a Monday start which I prefer because that way it syncs with my planner and I normally buy my medicines for the week on Sunday afternoons and fill in my Monday to Sunday medication in pill boxes on Sunday night so a pill box with a Monday start is a good thing in my world another good thing is that it cost me only 159 pesos, which is about $3. At this point, there is nothing left to do in Makati Med, so I decided to go home. Right outside, there is a small station where a personnel from Grab Car is waiting to book cars for people who are leaving Makati Med. But I have the Grab app on my phone, so I didn't ask to be booked by the guy there, the one in green. The booking was quick and easy and it's already 5.24 in the afternoon and my Grab app told me that right after I booked, my driver would be arriving in about 4 minutes, which is very, very quick. With Uber, it used to be like a 17 minute, 20 minute wait. So it's all good with Grab and this is why I prefer Grab over Uber now. And I am now walking to the Grab car that has just arrived even earlier than promised. And let me just show you the shaft of the scenic elevator that we just rode in. And this is the uh, Makati Medical Center. This is the driveway where most people get on and off. There is another driveway at the back, but this time I'm leaving from this point. I really like this medical facility. I have been confined here a couple of times and all of my doctors are here except for my dentist and my optometrist. It is now 527 and traffic is building up, but we are on our way home. And as is my usual style in my vlogs, let me just show you some of the things I saw while on the way. This is Makati City going to the city of Manila and it's not very pretty but it's real. Like I said before, I don't make my country look prettier than it actually is. It's certainly a beautiful country and I love it but some parts are not so pretty like this one. And finally, we are at my dorm building. This is one of the food courts here. I have a video about the amenities of my dorm building, which I will link down below. I decided to get something to eat and there is a Turks stall here. I ordered a beef wrap with cheese. I am just going to get a cold drink and then I'm going to my dorm room to eat and continue studying for my thesis. Bye.